How to do a life inventory. Welcome to this Life Raft episode and we are encouraging you to join us on this, this journey of how to evaluate and how to assess our lives. We're looking at this from Psalm 90 verse 10 to 12 and our key verse Psalm 90 to verse 12 says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And we have a number of references that you may jot down. These are listed on the screen. Of course, we put our disclaimer, and that disclaimer is to encourage you to do your own research. Thanks for the Holy Spirit. We pray that Yahweh will breathe on every character in this light raft. Paul book, in Jesus' name, this exhortation is a representation of what I believe Yah or Yahweh to some allowed me to capture on this topic of how to do a life inventory, how to assess our character for good success. And as 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 proposes, we encourage you to do your own thorough examination, scrutiny before you apply anything that we propose. And you can send your questions and comments to us on the YouTube comments section. This YouTube video, it accompanies, uh, well, I used to call it Anchor. I think the name has changed to podcast on Spotify or something. But we have an Anchor channel or a Spotify channel now that goes into some detail about this character balance sheet that we're proposing, how to do a life inventory. So we, we encourage you to look at this video alongside that podcast. So we want to introduce this. You know, why are we doing this life evaluation? Because you recognize that wasting our time on earth reduces our and our family's welfare or well-being. And we want to benefit from a way to evaluate and appreciate our time. Or more accurately, we want to understand how to evaluate our effort over time because there's really nothing we can do in a, in a real sense about the time that we have that is a divine um, allocation as we understand here based on our understanding of the biblical narrative. So in this reference in Psalm 90 verse 10 to 12, the author, which is Moses, we understand, reflects that we as humans are so fickle and we are now expected to live only 70 years, as Psalm 90, verse 10. That 70 years roughly converts to about 25,550 days. And we remember people, ancients like Adam and Methuselah, living almost 13 times the expected life expectancy over 900 years according to the Bible. Yah indeed points to a shortening of the days for the elect's sake. As we get more lawless, the issue is that we will reduce our life expectancy. And I believe Jesus points to this in Matthew 24 verse 22. So Moses here in Psalm 90 verse 2 is reflecting that we are more finite than before as he tries to rally the Hebrews to live meaningful lives in the time we have. The more meaningless we live is the less time on earth we are allotted as a species, and this places even more urgency on us than ever before to live meaningful lives and evaluate the type of lives that we are living. So how do we assess and live meaningfully? In Psalm 90 verse 12, as we captioned earlier, there are three important words that we focus on. Number one, teach. And here, teach means to reveal in the Hebrew culture, make known and to make someone understand or to facilitate someone's understanding. Now, when someone asks to be taught, it which is what David is doing here. Teach us to number our days. David is saying, I believe, not David, Moses, is saying that he is surrendering to Yahweh, to be his teacher, about how he can number his days. This divine surrender is also a very important way to number or evaluate ourselves. 
as you said, we did not give, you know, we did not put ourselves here, so we definitely cannot, uh, we cannot leave it up to our interpretation of what of 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 what our preferences are, what our opinions are, what our biases are to determine us, determine how meaningful our days are. We need an objective and absolute way to to be taught to to understand how to evaluate our days and ourselves or character the second word is number and in hebrew this is to weigh out constitute to put together a point prepare and set this again speaks to a forensic a very investigative uh, a, a very uh, a way where you inspect and judge yourself where you're critical um, in a sense of yourself so numbering here is a forensic term it is a term that speaks to examination and one who tests and puts themselves under rigorous scrutiny the third day the third word here in psalm 90 verse 12 is day which in hebrew it means useful time time in the light in their culture night is dangerous they don't yet have our comforts lights and all these fancy things that we have nowadays in most of the western world they're usually unable to address dangerous situations and proper illumination at night as we can know the hebrews at that time are under the urgency of a day as the time when the sun is up and they have more drive to use their sunlight so on the day, urgency is a key issue for us to embark on a life inventory. As we understand that each day lived reduces the remainder of the 25,550 days we have left because of sin, we're not yet experiencing immortality in the way that Jesus experiences it now where he never dies we are working with a finite number of days so these are the three important elements that we are interested in in how in living meaningful lives surrendering ourselves to yahweh being very investigative and being very urgent teach number and day what is a character balance sheet many people misunderstand that our success in life depends on our character that is our mental or moral qualities that are distinctive to us as individuals jesus of nazareth said it in his own way he said repent the kingdom of heaven is here repent which is proactively manage your character proactively manage your thought process heaven's kingdom the kingdom of heaven here speaks to our highest welfare and our highest consciousness is here that's in matthew 4 7. now we take stock of our lives by taking stock of our character traits we don't take stock of our lives by taking stock of our bank accounts or taking stock of our possessions or taking stock of our relationships we take stock of our lives by taking stock of our internal character traits Psalm 90 verse 12 implies a deliberate and proactive management of days or time, which must mean we have determined what our mission is for the time we are granted. Now this must and it can be built on Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the conclusion of the whole matter by the wise man, many say Solomon, the preacher, fear god fear yahweh elohim keep his commandments this is the whole duty of humanity and matthew 22 37 to 40 tells us about the greatest commandment which is that we must love the lord our god with all our heart soul mind and strength and yehoshua the messiah adds we should love our neighbor as ourselves. and these two hang all the laws and the prophets so that's our mission statement in an umbrella or universal sense However, missioning is something we must learn from Yah when we take those overarching mission that God gives us, that Yahweh gives us, between the Old and New Testament as referenced earlier, we now make that something specific to us. That is something we have to be taught from Yahweh to do. So to do an inventory 
or an evaluation of our days, as you say earlier, we must be taught by Yahweh. We had nothing to do with our existence, as that is Yah's decision. That we exist, Psalm 127.3, children are an inheritance of the Lord. We understand that since we didn't have anything to do with our purpose, Yahweh, or Yah to some, must inform our purpose for us to have good success. And we believe that he has taught us a little bit here in FAMT to do a character balance sheet where we write down our mission, the purpose, and then make a table with what we call assets, what helps us to achieve that mission or purpose, the why, on the left of the table and liabilities, what prevents us, what character traits, etc., prevents us from achieving the mission that goes on the right. You'll see that in the next slide. Therefore, for me, some people might say an asset is discipline. I can repeat a task, a successful task continually. Example, it might be physical training <clears throat> or getting up to pray or some kind of spiritual discipline. This helps me and my family with our mission to be godly family mentors that enable strong individuals to be strong families worldwide. However, <clears throat> that same thing can be a liability when it's perverted. And that, per, that same discipline can, to some, be seen as inflexibility, which prevents me from trying new things when existing things aren't promoting our family mentoring goals. So when I identify an asset, liability, in our prayer time, I can search Bible dictionaries, search through concordances to find the information on these assets and liabilities, <clears throat> and then we can develop what we call prayer points about them. We can pray strategically about these particular character traits, and we can experiment with new practices and experiment with new habits in terms of character traits. So example, for discipline, I reviewed the Naves Topical Bible. That's one Bible that can help you to study. And we studied Joshua, found Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. For then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. So it speaks to the call for discipline, the call for consistency, that Moses put on Joshua when he was handing over the reins to Joshua. I then pray for more of the consistency expected in Joshua 1 verse 8, recognizing that the temperance or self-control or discipline to some, that is a spiritual fruit <clears throat> in Galatians 5 verse 23, meaning discipline is produced from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit not just is not just telling you that you should be disciplined, but he empowers us to be disciplined. For inflexibility, I pray for consciousness. And I look at the life of Paul, the New Testament apostle, when he, for example, wanted to go into a place called Bithynia. He was told to go to Macedonia instead in Acts 16, verse 6 to 10. And for me, if that was probably me in Paul's case, I would probably be hitting my head against the, the, the stone wall to try to continue to go into Bithynia. But what I then pray for is consciousness based on John 17 verse 3, where Jesus tells his disciples in the true or genuine Lord's prayer, which is his prayer to God before he's getting ready to be sacrificed. He's saying that this is life eternal, to know God and to know his son, Yahushua, whom he has sent. And the know there is to be conscious of, to have an experience of God that is active and, and growing. So that leads to immortality. So I pray for that in John 17, verse 3, the consciousness of God, which is the real definition of immortal life or immortality. And whenever opportunities come up that challenge me to be flexible, I practice asking myself, writing down, how this change can be good at the time a choice is required. Then I relook at my notes in my per time. 
So that's some practices that I try to, and disciplines uh, that I try to do in terms of this character balance sheet. Join us in this exercise and let's try to do this character balance sheet together. Let us find these Bible verses that might be relevant to our character traits and pray about our assets and liabilities. So, below us is a mock character balance sheet and this individual has worked out a mission statement which sees them saying that they exist to help veterans integrate into social life by using their military and law enforcement background and experience to operate successful businesses in American retirement markets. So that's the mission which is at the top. The asset, which we have said the asset is a character trait, a particular feature that you possess that makes you better able to achieve this mission of helping of helping veterans integrate into social life etc and one of the traits they have defined so in the the mock character balance sheet you will have uh, the strategy is to go through to define your trait to get a bible reference and then to get a powerpoint so in defining your trait, you want to say what do you understand the trait to mean and where possible you want to look at differences between what you understand the trait to mean and what other people could interpret that trait to mean. And then why is this particular trait a benefit to your mission? Then in the Bible reference, you want to search particular software, biblical software, for example, Logos, or if you want to use the Naves topical Bible as we talked about earlier. You want to use this to find verses on that particular trait that you have identified above. Then you want to identify prayer points. You want to meditate on. You want to jot down a short sentence at most two that you can consistently pray about in your personal or some people say devotion time. And this objective is to help you keep practicing that particular trait. Now, for example, this particular individual said that their trait is honesty. They see honesty as an asset to help them in their mission. Honesty, they say, speaks to being truthful and non-deceptive. And the person here says that veterans are a close-knit trauma bonded community that respect when you are genuine and sincere and they believe that the trait helps them to connect with veterans and gain their trust so that would be an asset that helps them to help veterans to integrate in social life by using their experiences to operate successful businesses in american retirement markets a liability of this person however is that the person is uh, has a character trait of impatience now impatience is seen by many as an absence of the consistent capacity to bear with or to tolerate someone some veterans mishandle trauma this requires others to consistently bear with them in order to serve them some people would say some veterans are difficult to be around sometimes etc as with many other people and then you would look so if you go back to honesty so that's a liability the the in the impatience is a liability if you go back to the asset of honesty on the left column in the second in that left column the bible reference would one bible reference could be ephesians 6 verse 14 and that methodology, is, as you're saying, you could go to your Bible dictionary, look at the word honesty, see what comes up. Ephesians 6, 14, praying with all, you want to pray with all sincerity, pray in the spirit. And that is a particular trait that people use as a part of the armor of God. So sincere prayer is seen as a part of the armor of God. 
and the prayer point here that you could pull from Ephesians 6 14 is that you could ask father to help and here father is Yahweh the father of Christ in the Christian faith father is to help us to remain more truthful so that we can fight for our clients effectively in our with our mission as truth is in your armory and that is something that we can pray consistently for the impatience a bible bible references could be about matthew 18 26 to 35 which speaks about the servant who was forgiven of his many debts by a king and he goes out and he's impatient with somebody who owes him even less than he owed the king and he is he he experiences a reversal of his own forgiveness and the galatian 5 22 to 23 speaks to patience um, being one of the character traits of uh, someone who, who is filled with the spirit of god a prayer point we can pull from that is you could pray that father you recognize that impatience is the opposite of what your spirit produces in your son's followers as we know the fruit of the spirit is what the spirit produces in the followers of jesus and impatience can lead me away from representing you well with my clients help me to remember that i also require patience from you and others whenever i feel impatient urges so this is in essence something that you could work through and we encourage you to do so as well and to share your comments in the comments section in the in this youtube app and we encourage you to be very honest and if there are difficulties you have you could reach out to us also in the comment box below now over time we want to have more assets than liabilities we want to have more character traits that promote that help us to promote our our mission in life than character traits that detract from our mission that retard our ability to meet our mission in life so in conclusion when Yah opens our understanding to the 25,550 days we may have on earth, then we will see how urgent our actions are and make godly choices or apply our hearts to wisdom. That's the whole issue we feel about Psalm 90 verse 12. Now it's wise to repent or review and steer our character by addressing the positive and negative aspects of our personality rather than allowing our personality and character to run wild and waste our efforts in life outside of being divinely taught meaning being taught by yahweh we will waste our days we will make ungodly choices which reduces the overall welfare of our family or the well-being of our family so, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to have a way, a structured way of evaluating, numbering our days. And we understand that for us to number our days effectively, we need to submit to you. We understand, Father, that the time that we have is very limited on this planet. And we want to make best use of that time by showing the world our best character traits and by eliminating from our lives through your power our negative character traits. We thank you for the resurrection of Christ, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allows us to put to death the negative character traits or liabilities and to resurrect and to grow in the positive assets that are, that are in our character. We pray for everyone who is experiencing this, this rally. We pray that this light raft will lead people to honest and truthful evaluations of our, of our character. And we stand ready, Father, to help those who want to change because your, your son's kingdom is here and it requires that we repent, that we change, that we reevaluate how we think if we want to experience the best welfare we pray for every man who wants to lead their family effectively we pray oh god that your will be done 
in our lives and that we surrender to your will. We thank you for this methodology and we pray, O oh Father, that we will be honest in how we implement and execute it. In the name of your only begotten Son, Melech Yeshua, we pray. Amen.